Ethan. Uh, thanks for coming today. My name is Toby Owen. I manage our hybrid cloud solutions uh, product team at Rackspace. And I want to talk to you about scalability and automation um, and a little bit about, or actually a lot about, hybrid clouds uh, as a technology to kind of enable scalability and, and some automation, automated solutions we built at Rackspace. Um, Rackspace is based in San Antonio, and that's where I live. Uh, but sort of full disclosure, I, this is not my normal facial hair. So I'm participating in something called Movember, which is a, a kind of a worldwide um, awareness building, um, what do you call it, event, I guess, to, to raise awareness for uh, cancers affecting men. This is sort of our version of the, the pink ribbon, right? So um, if you want to learn more, there's some, some information. Um, unfortunately, we can't all look like this guy with the mustache, but um, just wanted to uh, kind of break the ice with that. But um, <clears throat> let me talk a little bit about hybrid clouds by using an analogy for something that, that you all are familiar with, which is the banking industry, right? So this is sort of legacy banking, right? We've got a bank branch, four walls, big, big bank vault, right? Um, it's dedicated for banking. You can't really do anything else at the bank except maybe get some bad coffee. Um, it's definitely secure, right? Two foot thick vault and things like that. It gives the bank lots of control. Uh, it's very centralized. Uh, unfortunately, it's not very scalable, right? It's very expensive. Um, I used to work for a bank um, years ago, and I think they said it was about $10 million, somewhere between two and $10 million to build a bank branch. So that's not very scalable. Um, it's definitely not very flexible, right? And from the customer point of view, um, it's not always ideal, right? There's queues, it can be slow. Um, you have to deal with someone through a pane of glass sometimes, right? So the cloud was born for banking, right? And this is, I don't know when this happened, but ATMs are everywhere, right? And so now it's, it's ubiquitous, it's easy access, it's 24 seven, there's usually not a line. But again, there are some trade-offs, right? Um, ATM's great for getting some cash for paying for dinner or the cab, but you may not put your cashier's check in there from the sale of your house, right? You're not gonna make that kind of deposit. So, so it, it has its place, but it's not great for everything. And so obviously banking has embraced the idea of um, different purposes for different platforms, right? So if you draw the analogy for, for traditional IT versus cloud, um, you can, you can kind of get the idea um, here that, that there's opportunities to do things kind of in a traditional way, and there's opportunities to do things in kind of the new cloud way. Um, and this is sort of the dilemma that a lot of people face, right? Um, when they're choosing between their current IT strategy, whether that's do it yourself in my own data center or uh, hosting with a traditional hosting provider or co-location provider, uh, or do I take the leap into cloud, right? Um, do I get to control everything or do I need to partner with somebody to deliver my IT? Um, do I have this fixed capacity that's very expensive to grow and to increment within my own data center? Um, or do I, do I really need some, some additional scalability that cloud offers? Um, do I have total control over how to customize everything or do I need to kind of choose the default settings that my provider has, has given me to choose from? Uh, and then the issue of lead time, right? I don't know of any IT department in a large company that can de deliver a server in five minutes. Right, and so those are the trade-offs. Um, I think let's kind of walk through who's using cloud today or why aren't more companies using cloud today, right? And this is not new for any of you all, I'm sure. Um, security is at the top of every survey, right? Security or compliance uh, in terms of concerns about what's wrong with or why, why aren't I using cloud today? Uh, performance comes up there. Um, there's often a long lead time to recode my application so it's gonna work in this new cloud architecture. Um, and maybe cloud just doesn't have all the features I need, right? It's still a, an emerging technology. Um, so are enterprises using cloud today? I mean, this is, this is sort of our perspective at Rackspace. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, but they may not be using it for everything yet, right? They're using it for limited cases. There may be new projects that are spinning up in the cloud. Uh, they may use, be using it for branding websites, things like that. But they're certainly getting started. And we're certainly seeing more and more production applications in the cloud. Um, the emphasis um, clearly is around private clouds as opposed to public clouds. This is a, a comfort level thing a lot of times, and a lot of times it's, it's driven by security or compliance as well. Um, so who is using more cloud? Obviously small and mid-sized businesses, uh, those that are starting off from scratch, they've built an application for the web, um, 
with cloud in mind, they've got a big advantage, right? Because they don't have to retool anything. They don't have to take a client server model and, and um, redo the whole application. Um, and certainly startups have that ability to be more nimble. But the question is, do I have to choose my traditional model or cloud, is there a way to have both, right? And so the answer really is a hybrid cloud, right? This is not a new concept again, um, but there's lots of definitions about hybrid cloud, but I'd like to adopt a kind of broad one just for, for the purposes of discussion, right? It's, it's a public cloud plus something else. And so at a high level, um, the advantage really is that you, you don't need to trade off two of these for the other, right? Um, with, with sort of traditional IT, a lot of times those requirements are driven around performance, um, security. Cloud is, is oftentimes cost driven, flexibility, scalability, time to market. Um, but by using some components of your, your current or traditional IT and some in cloud, you, you've got the ability to start to um, realize benefits kind of all the way, all the way around. Um, and the idea of sort of mixing and matching different components, rather than saying I've got an application that I need to choose uh, how I'm going to support that application, either physical hardware or cloud. Uh, you can start to deconstruct that application into its component pieces and, and start to match those to, to the infrastructure platform that's going to work best. Another way to look at this is that cloud and, and dedicated or traditional hosting, they're, they're great capabilities on their own. But when you put them together, you start to get some, some interesting benefits. Um, and we'll talk about what some of those are in a minute. So let's look at, at a few scenarios. And this, this isn't meant to be exhaustive, but um, this is certainly a common one um, that we support at Rackspace. This is uh, a public cloud plus hosting, right? So this is that traditional hosting, managed hosting. I've got my own dedicated infrastructure. Uh, and, I've, and I've connected that to a cloud. Um, public cloud versus a private, or connected to a private cloud, right? Again, this is one, um, we're, not, we're not unique in the industry, but, but um, for a hosting provider, um, that you could, you could deploy this kind of scenario, right? Now you've got, the, you've got an additional advantage here in that you're using potentially the same virtualization technology, and so you've got the ability to migrate workloads, right? So private cloud here in the sense of I'm not sharing my infrastructure, it's mine. Um, and public cloud meaning it's a, it's a shared infrastructure, right? So the ability to move, maybe you're doing development in public cloud and you move them to a private cloud to run production. Um, that might be a, a use case there. And another one is public cloud plus my own data center, right? And this I think is what most people think of when they hear the term hybrid cloud um, is I've got my own data center and I want to extend, extend it to the cloud to add some capacity, right? Um, Obviously here, that, that could be one great use case. I'm out of space. Uh, I'm done writing big checks for data centers, and, and um, I'm not ready to shut down my current data center, but I need some additional capacity. So how can I sort of bolt on a cloud, maybe for uh, a SharePoint service, or maybe for my, I can move my entire test and development environment there. Uh, or maybe all my new apps are going to be built in a cloud. So let's talk through um, some different uh, ways to look at the benefits of a, of a hybrid hosting scenario or just a hybrid cloud scenario. Um, one of the main ones around security uh, would be compliance, right? Um, if I've got confidential customer data, um, maybe I, I'm doing e-commerce and I've got PCI requirements, um, I can do a lot of work to secure my application uh, and do a lot of um, auditing of my hosting provider and those kinds of things, which are all good to do. Uh, and be able to, to do all that in the cloud, right? That's still sort of bleeding edge for the, the compliance regulations. Um, or I can keep those more secure data on dedicated infrastructure uh, and use the cloud for other sort of less security requirement uh, type of applications, right? Um, <clears throat> enhancing security, right? Cloud is still I would say the security tools available in cloud are still sort of emerging, right? We've got a much more mature set of security products for traditional IT. And so the idea of having cloud as part of an overall infrastructure potentially gives you the benefit to, to extend the, the security that you'd get from a dedicated firewall, from web application firewalls, intrusion detection um, to, to secure your cloud as well. Um, 
knowing where your data is, right? As soon as you move to a SaaS model or a uh, infrastructure as a service model, you may not know exactly where that data is stored, right? It may be somewhere within a region. It may be somewhere within that provider space that we don't even know. And so re regulations come into play. Certainly Data Protection Act uh, in Europe uh, is, is an important driver here. I need to know exactly where my data is stored, even if it's not in my data center. Um, again, there's a, an opportunity to keep that data, maybe even where it is today in my corporate IT um, environment and use cloud for other, other parts of my application. And again, uh, business continu continuity or data security. Um, maybe those are two different things, but using um, more of the enterprise ready, um, mature products around storage gives you some capability that, that we may not have yet in cloud. Um, certainly there's a lot of software vendors that are writing great applications that are cloud centric. Uh, but if you look at, at block level encryption capabilities from the large SAN providers, those are pretty far along in advanced. Um, and so keeping that, that that data on those platforms, uh, and, and again, using cloud for other use cases, might be a way to tackle some of these requirements. In terms of timing benefits, right, here's another big um, area where you can derive some benefit from a hybrid setup. Um, taking a piece of the cloud, um, moving a piece of your application, rather, to the cloud, rather than recoding the entire app, means you can start to get some of the benefits of cloud sooner, right? So if I am, say I'm a, a software vendor and I've written a, a client server model of software where I'm selling um, licenses and someone installs it on their server and I'm working towards sort of sassifying my application. Um, that's generally a pretty large endeavor, right? To recode my entire app for multi-tenancy. Um, an interim step might be to say, let me take that model and deploy it per cloud server for my customer and create some automation to handle provisioning and those types of things, which works very well in the cloud, right? It's, you can use um, scripts and programs, um, even things like, like RightScale to provision those servers on a customer by customer basis, build an automation engine, build a customer database, uh, and you're up and running as a SaaS application, right? While you do the, the longer term effort of recoding your application. That's one example we've seen. Um, Spiky traffic, right? This is a big one. It's certainly a big use case for cloud by itself, but it's another great example of um, using cloud for some extra capacity. Um, the, the real benefit here, I think, is, is around the economics, and I've, the next slide talks about that, but the idea of having sort of my average load reside on, on dedicated equipment where it, where it presumably is today, um, and, and using cloud just for those um, additional spikes. I only need those servers up and running um, while I've, I'm seeing higher than average load. Um, time to market's another big one, right? If you're writing software, the quicker you get that, that development cycle and the testing cycle is completed, uh, the quicker you get it out in the market and making money. Um, if you think about a, a, a fast development cycle, um, there's, a, there's a lot of effort and time spent on provisioning servers for test, reprovisioning those servers for the next, next test cycle, uh, obviously, cloud's a great use case for that, right? You can snapshot your image, use a server template. Uh, it's up and running. When you're done with your test environment, there's no more cleanup. There's no more um, retooling those servers. You just delete them and start over. Um, administrative costs, this is that whole DevOps concept, right? I've got more ability to do some system administrative tasks by my developers because I programmatic access to the cloud. And so it gives me as an IT manager more flexibility on how to deploy my internal resources, whether those traditionally might have been system administrators and network administrators and develop, developers, those start to blend a little more, right? Maybe it's some, um, I think one of the fears there is that sysadmins aren't gonna be around. I don't know that that's really true, right? There, there, there's still a lot of system work that needs to happen, but it might be an opportunity for them to kind of branch out and start to learn some basic coding. Um, coding to an API is not necessarily rocket science at, at a basic level to provision a server, right? So those might be uh, ways that those, you can encourage those folks um, to, to kind of retool. Um, but it certainly gives you some flexibility and, and potential for cost savings too. Um, economic benefit, this is, this is maybe one of the, the lesser talked about benefits of a hybrid scenario, right? So this, is, this slide is based on some research by uh, the Everest Group which is a consulting firm uh, that's based in Austin. And they did some, some studies on 
sort of relative workload costs based on compute cycles. Um, so if you look at a dedicated or a traditional IT model, and that's sort of your baseline at 100% cost, um, moving that to a virtualization platform potentially saves you around 35% of your costs, right? That's the consolidation effort we've all been doing for 10 or 15 years, right? We're getting more utilization out of the hardware we bought. Moving that to a public cloud model, there's potential for maybe 5% five, 5 additional savings over virtualization. Um, some of that, you, you might expect that to be a little more, um, but some of that you, you end up plowing money back into that to, to recode things to work in the public cloud. Um, what, what becomes really interesting is when you step into a hybrid cloud scenario, um, the opportunity for savings is, is pretty dramatic, right? Even as much as 75%. And the reason for that is this concept of um, what I talked about around having dedicated infrastructure for your, or, or whatever it is, um, for your average load, and then using utility build cloud just for those peak times, rather than um, what's common today, which is I need to provision, I need to do my capacity planning, and so I'm going to take my highest peak of traffic, whatever that means in terms of number of servers or um, size of database or whatever, uh, and maybe add five or 10% so I'm safe, and then buy all that stuff, right? And then nine months out of the year or 11 months out of the year, that sits idle until you have those peak times. If you can st start to drive down that um, over-provisioned equipment to maybe an average or a high average capacity, and then you can add this additional capacity uh, in the cloud when you need to very rapidly, um, that's where you really start to see those um, cost savings. And so here, this term's been thrown around uh, a lot recently, then it's just an easy way to think about it. Owning the base um, and sort of renting the peak, right? And that, that really comes from the different billing models that you get, right? Whether it's your own investment in a data center where you're paying, capitalizing that over years and years, or you're paying on a fixed basis to a hosting provider to provide that, that traditional um, dedicated equipment versus the utility pay as you go model of the cloud. Um, so here's a picture that kind of it represents my thinking around where we're at in, in a hybrid context, right? Because I've, I've heard the debate, is hybrid cloud just sort of something that we're talking about this year and next year we'll be moving on to something else, right? What, what is the reality? And I think as we're, we've seen cloud adoption certainly grow in the last couple of years, and these aren't supposed to be like predictions. This isn't a crystal ball kind of slide, but... Um, there's, there's not a metric on the, the vertical for a reason either, but um, certainly I'd say there's a lot more traditional IT than there is cloud today, right? We're seeing a lot of adoption, um, and at some point in the future, that's going to be different, right? We're going to see a lot of cloud, but probably there will still be traditional IT. And why do I think that? Well, if you look back to other generations of IT and transformational things that we've gone through, the mainframe era, right? Do we still see mainframe applications? Absolutely, right? Um, other technologies, there's still a place for them, and maybe they're just legacy because they're too expensive to get rid of, or maybe there's still a, a valid reason to use them. But whatever the, the reason, there'll always be a scenario where these things need to work together, right? And so to the degree that we can make these interoperate a little more smoothly and more easily, um, I think the quicker we can get to this state. But the point of this slide really is that I think a hybrid scenario is, is a more likely realistic state for, for a good amount of time to come. So I want to kind of step into using um, some technology that we've deployed at Rackspace as an example of how, how hybrid cloud might work um, in, in conjunction with uh, partnership with RightScale and, and how this can solve some of your problems, right? So we built a technology called Rack Connect, and that's basically connecting our dedicated hosting, which might be um, physical infrastructure. It might be sort of a hosted private cloud virtualized infrastructure with our public cloud, right? And so that you, you get some, some benefits here um, in terms of combining them, in terms of security, uh, the ability to define a policy and have that applied across your entire environment, um, adding, I, I think I talked about this on the security slide, but adding a firewall or maybe other security products and having those protect the entire uh, environment within the hosting company uh, or within Rackspace, um, including your cloud. And then the the idea of mobility here, like in conjunction with this hybrid hosting um, at Rackspace, uh, building a site-to-site -site VPN or bringing in a lease line gives you a couple of different ways to connect directly to the cloud to move data or move workloads. Um, 
So let me walk through, and I think this will get to your question of how do we actually connect, um, and how do you burst, right? Um, there's a number of ways, but let's, let's walk through a story here um, to kind of demonstrate the flexibility as a company is growing, right? So we'll start with a startup business. Let's say we're going to um, be an online retailer. And of course, we want to bootstrap this, right? Um, it's hard to get VC money to sell stuff online. And so we don't have any money. So what are we going to choose initially? A cloud server, right? I mean, there's, the economics are too compelling. Um, I'm not going to make capital investment because I don't have any capital. Um, I'd rather pay a couple pennies an hour uh, for a server. So that's where I start. OK, so now I've developed my application. All my testing's complete. I'm ready to launch. Um, now I'm starting to think about, well, I've got some intellectual property I've created here. Uh, I'm going to be dealing with customer records and confidential data. The security concerns start to creep in, right? So what's the solution? Well, it's at a firewall in front of my cloud. OK, now we're up and running. Uh, we're seeing some, some rapid growth in our business. Our products are very popular. Lots of people, social media is driving that, right? Um, uh, Maybe this is those, those little rubber bands that you remember those things, the silly bands. That was a, a good example. You guys are familiar with that? I see blank stairs. But they, someone figured out how to stamp out rubber bands in the shape of animals. And this became super popular with elementary kids. And then it fell off the face of the earth about six months later. But that's, that's the potential here, right, is huge growth. Um, but we're a little bit of a victim of our own success here, right? Our database running in the cloud is starting to, to slow down. And let's say we didn't have the foresight to use one of these horizontally scalable database technologies. Just say we're running uh, MySQL. Well, we could figure out how to shard that and, and do that in the cloud. Or we could just move it over to a physical server, right? And, then, and just let it scale up. Add more uh, cores to that box, add more RAM, faster disks. Problem solved. OK. Now, we're, now we've got an established business that we're starting to see some seasonality, uh, big traffic spikes uh, are a part of that. So how do I grow this capacity? to handle these traffic spikes, right? Let's add a load balancer. And let's go ahead and add. Um, we've got a good idea now, because we're up and running for a while, of what our average load's going to be. And so let's go ahead and add some physical servers to, to handle that, because that load's not going to go away. Um, but as we experience more traffic, we'll spin up more servers. Let's say this is our web tier here, right? Uh, and maybe they're load balanced with our physical web tier. Um, we can add those servers as we're experiencing spikes. Um, and those can be automatically load balanced with the physical servers. OK, so we're doing great. Um, maybe thinking about going public. And uh, we're going to diversify, right? And so our application is growing much more complex. Maybe we've got some back office systems we also need to deploy. Um, maybe that's obviously different than our, our web-based application. So I need some flexibility still, but I'm really concerned about security. This is sort of the, the guts of my business. Um, and I also need a lot of storage for this stuff. Um, what could we do? Well, we could add some private cloud to this mix, right? And we can do our ERP systems within the private cloud. Or maybe this becomes our internal development site. Um, we can add a, a SAN to this. Uh, and all this, again, is still connected and able to communicate um, within uh, within Rackspace. So this is just an example of, of you starting to see the flexibility as you grow over time um, of how this kind of hybrid scenario really helps to meet different, um, different needs. OK, so we're up and running. We went public. It's a very busy site. Um, we're able to, to react to our traffic spikes. Everything's good, but we're, we're spending a lot of time adding and removing servers, right? Um, it takes time to deploy infrastructure, even in the cloud. Uh, it's not magic. You still got to configure the server once it's loaded, right? Um, we've got to decide when to add servers. So what's the solution here? Well, obviously, this is where RightScale comes in, right? We've got the server template technology we've been hearing about all day, um, the ability to, to automatically deploy configurations up and ready to go, even complex deployments. Um, we've got the ability to scale on demand so we can set those triggers because we already know um, what those should be probably. We've been managing this environment. And so now, finally, your system administrators um, can start to take a break. Right? They get all this set up. Now they can go kind of sit poolside for a couple of days and just sort of watch as the traffic grows, your cloud grows. OK, the spike was gone. It goes back down. Um, 
so on and so forth, right? So this now becomes really an integrated and, and automatic environment that's, that's reacting to traffic. Um, and it's based on um, several different platforms and different technologies underneath. And was, how does a cloud server enable auto scaling? Actually, it doesn't. Um, the cloud server, no, the server itself doesn't. Um, so with, with Rack Connect by itself, um, we don't auto scale, right? What we've built is as you provision a cloud server in this environment, it will be automatically connected to the rest of your environment. Right? Um, and in addition, it'll be automatically secured and isolated from the rest of the cloud. Um, but you still need, as, a, as an owner of that environment or the application, you need to know when to add capacity. Right? So it's really right scale and, and the server arrays and the auto scaling capability that allow you to, um, to set thresholds and set scale triggers to say, based on this event within my application or, or this you know, connections per second, those types of metrics where, where you can make a decision to add capacity, right? Or right scale can then make a decision for you. So I can point out some of the, the capabilities that we have automated because I think um, those aren't necessarily trivial. Um, the idea of having a, a, an environment that's set up um, within a single data center um, where you've got access to physical and cloud, right? That, that's clear. But when you're adding cloud servers, um, those are now automatically moved logically behind your firewall um, and, and routed so they're within the same uh, logical network. Um, if, if you're using a load balancer like this example here, um, that server can also be automatically added to the load balancer pool. Right? So if this is, let's say you've got two web servers here and six here, um, those are all in the same load balanced pool. Right? And so as, you, as you, you started from one and we added five more, each one of those um, based on metadata that you supply when you, when you build the cloud server, they're automatically added to the load balancer. So the only thing left for you to do, uh, minus, minus right scale, is decide when to add the capacity, right? Um, and then configuration management, right? So our capabilities there today are you can, you can start from scratch and, and we can help you fire off some chef scripts or things like that that can be post-provisioning. Um, or you can take an image here, which works pretty well for a web, web environment, uh, take a snapshot of it, and then build from that snapshot, right? So your content's already in place. Um, however, if you've got a more complex configuration, um, we don't have a tool set to do that. And that's why we've partnered with RightScale, because they provide those additional capabilities to do that. So let's look at a couple of customers, um, just as an example of how they've, they've kind of addressed this in, in, a, in a hybrid scenario. This is Under Armour. You, you all are probably familiar with them. They sell sports apparel, um, both commercially to professional sports teams and, and retail. Um, they sell a lot of things online. Obviously, their, their brand is very important to them. Their site needs to stay up. Um, and they're continuing to grow in terms of appeal, right? So what, what was their solution? Um, well, using a hybrid environment uh, for their e-commerce application, over here on dedicated equipment is their shopping cart, right? All the cardholder data, all the transactional information is in their, um, their own single tenant database um, and application servers. Over here is, is the image library, right? Call it the product catalog. Uh, lots of static content. Uh, it's great for the cloud. We can even store that on, on cloud storage and automatically push it out through the content delivery network, make sure that all those images load very fast. Um, those are connected together, and so the result is you know, a website and a good user experience, right? And so that enables them to scale. Obviously, they're doing online sales. They're going to see peaks, um, and so they've got some of that elasticity as well. Um, one other example here I think is interesting um, is a company that we host called Major League Gaming, and they're one of the leaders on, in, in online games. Um, they also do sort of head-to-head -head gaming competitions. Um, which is, if you're a gamer, it's really cool. And for non-gamers, it sounds a little geeky, but um, it, it, it's pretty neat where they'll bring together the best gamers from around the world and put them in a stadium, and you can play each other head-to-head -head on Halo or, or World of Warcraft or you know, all these games. And then they'll, um, they'll cover all this content online. So there's live video streams and leaderboards. and So they see a huge um, spike in traffic during these events, which are like once a month maybe two days, they're seeing 15 times their normal traffic, right? Um, two days a month. So it just makes no sense at all 
to build out 100 physical servers or however many just for two days, right? And then those sit there for 28 days a month unused. And so they've built out um, in the hybrid platform and they've um, moved some of their leading games and they, they continue to move them um, onto this hybrid platform because uh, it, it really helps them. Now what's interesting about the, what they've done is their, their applications are very CPU intensive, right? So instead of using um, that, that cloud portion for elasticity in their web tier, they're actually using it for their application tier, right? So they've built their application to be able to scale horizontally and so if they need more um, processing capability, they can do that in the cloud. Uh, and then this quote from their CTO says, hybrid and the ability to scale on demand becomes a new table stakes in the online world. You're at a disadvantage just if you don't have it, right? So this isn't talking about Rackspace. This is talking to his competitors in the market saying, um, this is something you guys need to be paying attention to, right? It gives the ability to scale and also the, the performance, right? They've got a very um, I.O. intensive database on the back end, right? They're tracking hundreds of millions of users or at least tens of millions of users and all that data. Um, that wasn't working very well in the cloud either. And so they've got um, a very fast database cluster with SAN storage for all that stuff. Um, but the application tier works very well in the cloud. But what we try to create here is, is an infrastructure that gives you a lot of flexibility and choice, right? At the end of the day, we want to make it easier to have these things connected um, and, and give you some flexibility and then um, and then you can kind of go run with that, right? And so, uh, yes, there's still some work to be done, but, but hopefully this will help you do it um, maybe a little more efficiently, maybe a little more cost effectively, um, and be able to react, react quicker to as your business changes. So I know I'm the last guy between you and, and uh, drinks and, and dinner, so um, if there's, I'm happy to stay after for more questions, um, but I don't see any, so um, I'll be here for a few minutes, but um, thanks for coming, and. I uh, hope you enjoyed your day today. <coughs> Thanks.